Hello everyone, welcome to Mark 1 Design EMC video channel. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to set up a pre-compliance EMC test for mains powered product. The mains powered product can be home appliance or multimedia device and so on. To test the conducted emission of mains powered product, we need the setup showing here. We will go to details. Basically, you would need a mains listen, ground plane, and you also would need an isolation transformer. The reason that you need an isolation transformer is because, because of the way the listen is built, they have huge capacitance inside. When you switch on the listen, chances are that you will trip the RCD in the house. So you do need an isolation transformer to prevent the tripping uh, from happening. Okay, so here shows you the um, test setup for a mains powered product. Now, it is a good idea to test the any product against a benchmark uh, result. So often we use a well-branded product, which we know will definitely pass the EMC standard as a benchmark test. So in this case, we're using a well-branded uh, hairdryer. Uh, as you can see, the test setup shows uh, uh, listen, uh, ground plane, and we have some insulation uh, material to support the DUT. And because the DUT is a handheld product, according to the standards, you will also need to have an uh, artificial hand. Uh, then on the product handle, we have some uh, we made some foil wrapped around to represent a hand holds the product. Um, and here, of course, you would need a spectral analyzer to measure either the conducted noise on the line or on the neutral line, on the live line, on the neutral line. And first of all, I have to stress one important thing, which is high voltage safety. Now, lots of the videos I watched on YouTube talking about pre-compliance EMC testing, especially the mains powered product, they barely touch the high voltage safety, which in my opinion is not correct. So in this case, as you can see, for high voltage safety, you need to bond the LISM front panel securely to the ground plane. Same applies on the rear panel of the LISM and using copper copper tape to tape it and the listen itself is earthed to the isolation transformer uh, casing and the transformer itself is earthed okay so make sure that the ground plane is properly earthed this is for high voltage safety because any leakage current um, put on the ground plane can potentially um, damage yourself or kill yourself, okay? So that's very important. Now we look at the uh, listen front panel. This is a listen 16 amps, 230 volts rated from a tech box. On the front panel, we can see it's fairly straightforward. You have the uh, 10 dB attenuator or a transient limiter you can choose on or off and here you can select to either measure the line voltage or the neutral voltage basically the conducted noise can be measured from both both line or either line this is the RF output of the listen which you are connected to your spectrum analyzer the reason I didn't connect to the spectral an analyzer is because this output is you need to check the output of the RF out of the listen. So first of all, you need to check whether the voltage level is within your spectral analyzer uh, RF input. Any voltage level higher than the specified input of the spectral analyzer will damage the RF input or the RF front end of your spectral analyzer. So be very careful about that. And the second thing is, even I measured the RF out of the listen 
idle in the idle state that is within the limit, I'm not going to connect it until I run my product. Simply because the product on the test can be highly inductive. So by the time you switch it on or switch it off, there might be a very big kickoff uh, voltage, or often we call it back EMF induced, that can also damage the front panel or front RF input of the spectrum analyzer. So I, I will make sure that while I turn the uh, device on, then I start measuring. And before I switch off the DUT, I will make sure that I disconnect um, the uh, spectral analyzer. So that's very important to note. Here you have the um, your mains power out connected to your um, DUT. Here we we're using an artificial hand because this product, as I said, is a hair dryer, and by testing standards, you will need a hair, uh, you you will need an artificial hand. So. Just to stress the points we just made, high voltage safety first, then always make sure that the spectrum analyzer RF input is well protected by checking the listen RF output and also by disconnecting in the right time. And for handheld mains products, uh, if the standards require artificial hand, connect artificial hand. Okay, so now we are going to uh, have the product tested. Okay, so everything set up. Switch on the listen. You can see the light is on, and we make sure artificial hand is connected, power cable connected, and we're going to measure the conducted emission on the live line. And then uh, I turn the attenuator off because I already checked the RF output. Um, before I'm going to connect the spectrum analyzer. Okay, as I said, I need to switch on the product first. So I'm turn on the product, and now I'm going to connect my spectrum analyzer. Okay. Okay, to start this conducted emission test of this product, I often use a software together with the spectrum analyzer. The software is EMC View, which is developed by TechBox. Okay, so now with all this set up and um, connected properly to my spectral analyzer, the next thing I need to do is click Start. Okay, so now we're gonna click Start, and as you can see, um, the uh, software basically sends commands to my spectral analyzer. The uh, scanning started now. All the resolution bandwidth, video um, bandwidth, and stop and start frequency has been uh, predefined, as I said, in the segment um, file. So you can see here we're doing a frequency step of 235 kilohertz scan. So that's the first segment scanning finished. Now we're starting from 3.75 megahertz. Uh, sorry, we're starting from 2.5 megahertz and now we'll start stop at 5 megahertz. Um, yeah, so you can see all the uh, values are predefined in the setup file in EMC view. So very easy. We just wait until the scan of each segment is finished. All these data will be trans transferred back to the software, and the software will automatically stitch all the segments uh, scanning results together and put the results on the um, output um, file. So let's just have a look. So yeah, yeah, the first segment data is now stored back into the PC, as you can see from the screen. We have a uh, average scanning results showing here and currently it is still be below the um, margin line, which is pretty good. Um, the third scan also starts from 150 kilohertz to 2.5 megahertz. And as we just speak, the next scan, the segment data will be now put in again. And here also you can see the estimated remaining time, which is 
estimated at six minutes left. So it's pretty easy, as I said. You just wait for six minutes. In the meantime, you can get yourself a cup of tea and um, just wait until the results are uh, finished. Okay. So after a few minutes, both uh, scanning for average and peak scanning are now completed. And we have the results showing in the uh, software interface. And you can already see that I have labeled um, these limits correctly. And I can also label these two traces uh, which are just plotted, right? Doing that is fairly easy. You just, to, you just need to um, go to labels, yeah, and then uh, set a label. Then here, there, there's a new label that you can drag easily. And then right click, and then you can edit. So basically here, we know the purple line is peak value. So I can just say uh, PK, yeah. And then you can do the same for the average, okay? So the we can see here, in this case, the um, plotted results are all under the limit and also even within the margin we, get, we, we, we predefined, which is pretty good, uh, which shows this product surely will pass conducting emission uh, uh, scanning. So there are a lot more functions within the capability of this software which we can't cover everything in one session. Some useful features are found very um, high efficient. For instance, if you don't want to do a full scan from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, what you can do is you can select segments here and you can see um, you can drag each seg segment into different position and you can by selecting all or specific segment then you just do a very short uh, quick scan and to just focus on th that area so that's one function i highly recommend uh, other useful functions include you can also use this software as a generator to generate um, uh, you know your spectrum analyzers tracking generator connected to an rf amplifier to do some immunity tests one other useful function is you, if you go to fire and then you go to utilities you can save the results as pictures as csv file or what i found most useful is you save chart so by clicking save chart you basically save all the raw data in your computer and one of the benefits is of course we just did this scan for this benchmark testing we save this chart and then we can do another scan of another product perhaps is your a product from your customer that asks you to look at and then you can basically compare the performance of that product with these benchmark results so in this session we demonstrate step by step how to set up a pre-compliance conducted emission test by using a LISM module, a spectrum analyzer, and an EMC view software. We explained why it is important to always make sure that high voltage safety practice is executed first. We then explained why it is important to do the scanning segment by segment. Uh, if you have the software, of course, the software will do it for you very easily. If you don't have the software, I would also suggest you do it segment by segment and perhaps using some uh, other software to stitch the segment together later on. We used a well-branded, good quality product for benchmark testing and the results show the conducting emission is within the limit. So this often serves as a benchmark testing and then when you have other product to test, you can always use this result as a benchmark, as a reference. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you like it, please share with your colleagues. And also, if you like it, please subscribe to our channel and also visit our website for more information. Thank you very much.